Let's get started using Platino within a Titanium project. In Titanium Studio, we'll create a new mobile project by heading to File, New, and then choose New Mobile Project. We'll use a classic template and the default project. Now for a project name, we'll call it My First Project, and I'm going to save mine on the desktop. I'll create a new folder, My First Project, and then choose Open. For the app ID, I'll type in my app ID. You would type in yours, which is com.cheetomosquito.myfirstproject. So yours would be your domain in reverse order. My website, cheetomosquito.com. And we'll leave the Titanium SDK version alone. And for the deployment targets, I'll uncheck mobile web. I'm assuming that you have your iOS and Android SDKs already configured and installed, so we'll skip the setup and configure, and we'll skip Titanium Cloud settings. Now choose Finish, and it will create the project on the hard drive. With the project now created, I'll head to the Modules tab within the Tie App Editor. If you don't have this open, you simply double-click Tie App XML here in the Project Explorer. And in the Modules area, I'll choose the plus icon, and now I'll choose co.lanica.platino. And I'm assuming you've already installed the Platino files into your application support Titanium directory. So we'll choose OK. And save. So Command S. Close this. And now we're within the app.js file in our project. By default, Titanium creates a two tab application. We don't need that at all. Highlight all of the code and hit delete. And save. We'll start by creating a self-invoking function. So we'll open some parentheses function and then put some parentheses afterwards. This will create a new function scope so that way all of our variables are contained within this scope and we don't pollute the global namespace. I'll double tap this tab so that we're just dealing with the code in the window. To get started, I'll create a UI window. So var win equals ti.ui.create window. And if you've used Titanium before, this should be very familiar to you. Then we'll open the window, win.open with parentheses. Now to use Platino, we need to call the module. So above this code, I'll create a variable called var platino equals require and start a string co.lanica.platino and here we're loading the platino module into the variable platino now we'll need to create a game view titanium is all about views and remember that platino is a module in titanium it's not a standalone game engine so it is loaded as a module and will use a lot of the same features that titanium uses and it has some quirks because it is a game engine within titanium so now underneath the declaration of the window we'll type var game equals platino create game view and open and close parentheses so this creates a game view and returns it into the game variable. Now we'll need to add this to the window, win.add game. So far so good. The last thing we need to do is add an event listener that listens for the onload event that's fired by the game. So game.add event listener, and we're listening for the onload event, and we'll create a function to handle that event in place. Now, within this function is where we will set up the window size and as well start the game engine. Remember that Titanium has the ability to create applications for both iOS and Android devices. iOS devices, the size of the screen is pretty controlled by Apple. But with Android, you get lots of different screens, lots of different densities. And so you need to create some sort of way that your game is expected to run on a targeted resolution. So the way that we'll do that is we'll create variables that set the width and height, and then we'll change the scaling of the game accordingly. So within the function that is handling the onload event, we'll create the following. var self equals e dot source. So what we're doing here is we're creating an indirect reference to game, 
which is e.source. e is the onload event, and the source of that event is the game object. Now we could just type game and use a direct reference. I prefer, whenever possible, to use indirect references. Okay, I'll type a comma after e.source, indent, and then I'll type screen in all caps, equals, and then open and close a curly brace. So I'm creating an object. Now within the curly braces, width, colon, and this is the desired width of our game, which is 320 pixels, and height, which will be 568 pixels. Okay, and then after the closing curly brace, I'll type another comma, and now we will define a scaling factor. Scale equals self.size.height divided by screen dot height. So remember that self refers to the game object. We defined that on line eight. And so we're taking the height of the game view and we're dividing it by our desired height to get a scaling factor. Uh, one last point, I already pointed this out actually, but it does bear repeating. The var declaration applies to all three of these variables and that's because I'm using commas between their declaration. I could have typed var, variable, var, variable, but actually that's, that's not how I like to do it. In this particular case, I chose to use commas and the indentations are to help your eyes adjust. Okay, so now it's time to set up the game view. So beneath line 13, where we defined the scaling factor, I'll now set up the screen. Self.screen equals, and I'll open and close curly braces, and we'll set a property called width, and that will be equal to self.size.width divided by the scaling factor. Then height will be the same, but with height. Self.size.height divided by scale. Now we'll set the touch scaling. Remember, we're dealing with a game view, not necessarily a standalone window that is always a game. So we need to define a, scale, a touch scaling factor just in case we were to ever resize this view. So self.touchScaleX equals self.screen.width divided by self.size.width. And then we'll do the same for the Y. So I'll copy this line and paste it, change this to Y, and change the width to height. Now, since our game will take up the entire screen, there really is no scaling, but this is just in case we were to use a game view in conjunction with other titanium views. Last thing we'll do is we'll start the game engine, self.start, and this is a method. So far, so good. If we test this, we should get just a black screen. Let's test it. So I'll double tap the tab and under run, choose iPhone simulator. So now the iOS simulator opens and we see the splash page and then we open to a black screen. Now, typically when you're developing, that's bad news, but actually in this case, it's good news because we haven't seen the red screen of death, which if you've developed with titanium before, you see this big red screen that says error, um, but so we don't have that. Uh, but we're ready now to create some objects, place them in the game view and start developing.